Okay, so according to me, this is a syllabus coverage. Starting from 7th of 9th of July. Till you know Saturday that is before unit test. So according to me, I think so 99% of three units have been covered. And unit number three PLD synthesis and simulation tools and FPGA synthesis and implementation. I had uploaded uh, some PDFs there, so it is also covered. So today we are going to commence with unit number four that is digital CMOS circuits. It's a very, very interesting topic. OK, so this is what will be covered as a part of this unit. That is uh, NMOS, PMOS and CMOS. The basics which uh, you must have studied in second year, but we will uh, see it from a different perspective. Then we have MOSFET parasitics technology scaling about which we have been repeatedly talking about even in our PPT's introduction to VLSI uh, field. There is a CLM channel length modulation. I know that you have studied CLM in your second year. Hot electron effect, velocity saturation, CMOS inverter in detail, not the circuit diagram, but deriving the VI characteristics of a CMOS. Basically transfer characteristics also called as, um, um, you know, um, what do you call VTC, voltage transfer curve. Then we have device sizing, uh, CMOS combination logic design, power dissipations in CMOS, PDP that is power delay product, body effect, rise and fall times, latch up effect and transmission gates. So this is a very important topic because uh, this CMOS combination logic design also forms uh, one of the potential assignments in part B. OK, so it is uh, not there as a part of syllabus, but still we keep it in the exam. So this is a very important topic which will be covered. There will be some problems we'll be solving on this. Then power dissipations, as especially and last uh, but not the least transmission gates. So combination logic design, transmission gates and power dissipations are three things which also appear in part B assignments for which we are going to use the tools microwind and DSCH. OK, fine. So today we'll start with NMOS, PMOS and CMOS. OK, so this is according to the syllabus that is NMOS, PMOS and CMOS logic. But before we start discussing any anything about these logic families, we have to first revise. We have to first revise about the basics of MOSFETs. For example, if randomly any student, if I ask a question, can you tell me that how to switch on and off a PMOS? Then we have to think for some time. Then if I ask a question that why in the PMOS <coughs> transistor symbols there is a bubble and there is no bubble in the symbol of NMOS. What is which kind of MOSFETs are used in the field of VLSI? Are they depletion MOSFETs? Are they depletion enhancement MOSFETs or are they enhancement MOSFETs only? OK, so these questions are very, very important to understand. At the same time, in second year, I do not know uh, how much did the syllabus or the staff member emphasize on the importance of the fourth terminal of MOSFET that is the body terminal. So usually just like in first year, if you ask a student that um, how many values can a digital systems output have? Student says two, one and zero. When the same student comes to second year, he studies that no, it's not two, it's three because high impedance state is also one of the possible outputs. When the student goes into the final year, same question is asked. He says there can be nine possible states, strong one, strong zero, weak one, weak zero. 
strong unknown weak unknown don't care high impedance and uninitialized so that is where details go on increasing as we study a subject deeper and deeper so first we have to brush up about how this device is actually operate okay so while i'll be writing some points i'll also be explaining simultaneously okay yeah so we already told before that vlsi is nothing but a combination of single chip and we told that when we speak about a transistor in the field of vlsi we actually mean a mosfet not a bjt hmm? because of reasons you already know when we speak about mosfet hmm we know there can be depletion there can be enhancement and there can be depletion enhancement also so we have studied this types in power electronics among all these three we use this thing okay we do not use either depletion mosfet or depletion enhancement okay said like that now we also know that when we say mosfet it means metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor they are also classified as p mos and n mos also known as p channel mos also known as n channel mos okay now this is very important that mosfet it's a four terminal device not a three terminal device drain d source s gate g and fourth is 
body terminal B, also sometimes known as substrate. Okay. And this gate terminal is also known as control terminal because it is responsible for turning on and off the device. Okay, why control terminal? Because it can switch the device on or off. Okay. So these are uh, applicable to both N channel and P, P channel. That is why I'm writing it here. Okay. Another important fact is um, both of them have equal doping concentrations. Because we are studying VLSI and currently we in VLSI we are speaking about digital applications. That is why we understand that these MOSFETs are going to be used for implementing digital systems. That is why these transistors must act as a switch. Okay, so we say that. Okay. MOSFET is used as a switch hmm? semiconductor switch obviously okay and um, switch means transistor is on or transistor is off so transistor status is on or off. Okay. Naturally, when a transistor is in on state, hmm, it acts as a close switch conducts current and uh, offers zero on state voltage drop. On the other hand, if it acts as off, then we can say acts as open switch hmm. carries zero current and blocks input voltage okay this is basic okay now we go on to how nmos and pmos will operate as well as the symbols symbols and operating conditions for MOSFETs.
Okay. En mos, vimos. So, I will make a comment here that both en mos and p mos are enhancement type. Because it is a MOS, that is why there has to be an indication of an SiO2 layer in between. We should always remember that MOSFET is a four terminal device, not a three terminal. Gate, source, drain, and body or substrate. Similarly, for PMOS, it will be opposite. Hmm? And uh, here there is a change. Is that from now itself, we are going to develop a habit of um, showing the source terminal as upper terminal and drain as lower terminal. OK, so here you see drain is the upper terminal of NMOS. OK, fine. Let us keep the same convention. No problem. Only one difference is there. The direction of the arrow is changed. Otherwise, everything is same. Gate. Drain, body, source. Okay. Now we also should learn what are the simplified symbols. Now these are actual symbols. We should learn the simplified symbols. OK, and why simplified? Because please understand one important concept which can be which usually is asked in Viva. That. OK. Irrespective. Of. The. Type of MOSFET. body and source terminals are are always short circuited very important okay so irrespective of the type of mosfet body and source terminals are always short circuited that is VBS equal to zero. OK, so whenever two points are short circuited, the potential difference between them is zero. That is why when we say that body and source are short circuited, VBS is zero. What is the purpose of doing this in order to in order to eliminate body effect? In order to. Eliminate body effect. So body effect is also part of our syllabus. There you are going to appreciate this again. OK, so in another words, when VBS is equal to zero, there is no body effect. So we can say body effect means VBS is not equal to zero. So so VBS is not equal to zero. 
is termed as presence of body effect is very important okay so when we short circuit body and source terminals for reliable operation of both pmos and nmos at that time we do not show the body terminal uh, in the simplified form okay so we can also say here that in simplified symbols of mosfet we assume that b and s are shorted hence we do not show the b terminal many times students get confused with the direction of arrows that in n n mos that arrow should be from right to left and in p chan should be you know left to right that is why a simplified way is that in one symbol you do not show a bubble at the gate and another symbol you show a bubble okay so drain source gate gate drain and source okay so in both the cases here both the cases vbs is equal to 0 okay please also note that <clears throat> nmos does not have a bubble and pmos has a bubble and the pmos okay so the reason why in the pmos symbol we show a bubble at the gate and the reason why we do not show bubble at the gate comes from our basic concept of digital electronics that bubble indicates active low system and uh, no bubble indicates active high okay that means what that in a system in which enable is active low when you connect that particular enable to ground or zero that system activates similarly if some system is having active high enable i need to connect that enable signal to logic 1 in order to enable the system similarly if we see the theory if i apply the gate of pmos to logic 0 then the pmos becomes on indicates what if i apply gate uh, to ground it becomes on so pmos is a active low device and for nmos we have to connect the gate to logic 1 that means it is active high device we can also make a note here that just like in digital system that's just for today that i just want yeah so just like in a digital system
bubble indicates I'll just come in a minute. Okay, so just like in a digital system, bubble indicates active low. Similarly, bubble at the gate of PMOS indicates that for g equal to 0 pmos equal to on and g equal to 1 PMOS equal to off. Similarly, for NMOS G equal to one. NMOS equal to on, G equal to zero, NMOS equal to off. It's very, very important here. So we can summarize it like this that practical okay. practical Similarly, for PMOS, we can draw one.
Fine. So it's the same summary for NMOS transistor. Gate equal to one acts as closed switch. For gate equal to zero acts as open switch. Similarly for PMOS, for gate equal to one it acts as open switch, and for gate equal to zero acts as closed switch. So they are complementary devices. Okay. So this is for NMOS. And this is for EMOS. OK, so now it is clear about the symbols to be used for NMOS and PMOS transistors as well as the operating conditions to uh, switch on and off the MOSFETs. OK, so this is very, very important to understand for analyzing circuits which are built using PMOS and NMOS devices. OK. So now certain important things about uh, why a, a FET is called as a FET. OK. I'll write a question here. Why FET is called field effect transistor who will answer this question hmm? why fat is called as a field effect transistor okay i want to check with your basics why so fat is called as a fat yes sir because they can be controlled by a voltage uh, voltage controlled current sources uh, then uh, it should be called as voltage effect transistor, not field effect transistor. I hope in final year you know the difference between voltage and field. Can you tell me what is the difference between voltage and field? Yes, sir. Voltage is a uh, scalar and field is a vector electric field. Voltage is scalar and field is vector. Any other definition? Mathematical difference between voltage or a mathematical connection so between voltage, voltage and field is gradient of electric field. OK, so can you define? So if, if I'm applying a voltage V across something, can you define what is a field between the two points? Sir, the difference between the voltage divided by the uh, distance between the points. Correct, correct. So field is voltage upon distance. Correct, right? So the same definition applies to prove that why this particular structure is called as a field effect transistor. OK, so it is very, very important. OK, why FET is called as a field effect transistor? OK, let us put down some facts. Now, first is that Can you tell me uh, which are the voltages responsible for operation of a FET? Yes. Sir, VGS and VDS and uh, threshold voltage. Drain. Source gate okay and i hope you appreciate that in a in a n channel mosfet n mos the current flows into the device and in case of p mos it flows outside the device okay now the different voltages which are associated here is this okay we have VDS. We have VGS and there is one inbuilt voltage. Hmm? OK, that is called as. Threshold voltage. VT. OK, so just like in diodes, we have cut in voltage, which represents the internal energy of the device. 
Similarly, there is something called as threshold voltage, which also represents an internal energy of the device. So till your VGS does not exceed VT, till that time the channel is not formed. And if channel is not formed, there is no question of channel inversion. If there is no channel inversion, there are no charge carriers present under the gate, which can be given a motion by applying the correct polarity VDS. Okay, it's very important. So now we can jot down that the important voltages which are associated are okay. So the voltages involved in MOSFETs operation are VDS, VGS and threshold voltage VT and there is only one current involved here. ID also known as IDS sometimes so you can also write on IDS here not an issue. Okay, And unlike a BJT in which we have emitter current base current and collector current an emitter current is a summation of collector current and base current here we do not have anything called as gate current it is theoretically zero. OK. So now the inequalities between these three voltages are responsible for deciding that the MOSFET is going to operate in cutoff region, saturation region or in the ohmic or linear region or sub threshold region. I repeat the inequalities between VDS, VGS and VT are actually responsible for the operating region of the MOSFET. Another important thing is this now. OK, now as Yash told that the electric field E electric field E is equal to voltage upon distance. If we carefully see the planar structure of a MOSFET, there are at least two dimensions which are involved here. OK. There are at least two dimensions involved. We'll draw it now.
दरवाजा बंद करेंगे फिर से so this will be our reference diagram for many other um, you know analytical topics in the syllabus that is why i spent some time on this now we are in a position to define all the geometric dimensions of the mosfet all the geometric dimensions of the mosfet it's called as a 3d planar structure so yes so heavily doped regions source and drain we have p type substrate this is the width w channel length l this is called a junction depth xj and this is an important dimension which will be used for us used by us to define the electric field in the device so you know that this is the sio2 layer so this is called as t ox oxide thickness
in here view all the terminals VGS VDS Okay Yes Now Electric field E is equal to voltage over distance. Okay. And in this structure, we are able to see there are two electric fields. We have lateral field E lat. The lateral electric field is equal to the drain to source voltage upon the channel length L. Similarly, we have something called as a vertical electric field. E ver okay and this vertical electric field E ver is defined as the gate to source voltage upon oxide thickness T ox okay this is the vertical electric field and this is the lateral electric field Okay. We can actually show it here. This is E lat and this is E ver. Okay. And because the current IDS flowing through the device is a resultant effect of the two electric fields, lateral and vertical, that is why this device gets the name field effect on this term. the device current IDS is a 
resultant effect okay is a resultant effect of two electric fields e lat and e ver hence the device gets the name field effect list okay now having said this why it is called as effect now we have to find out what are the voltage inequalities which are going to determine the operating region of mosfet we already mentioned that there are three voltages involved vds vgs and vt okay so we will now put down voltage inequalities for most first okay if vgs is less than vt okay so i'll mention here we are speaking about nmos okay vgs is great less than vt and uh, even if vds is greater than 0 mosfet is in cut off region cut off and the result is a device current is equal to 0 second condition is if vgs minus vt is greater than vds is greater than 0 then the device is in ohmic region ohmic or linear region okay and the current ids is proportional ids is proportional to vds in other words ids is equal to k times vd sir third condition is vds is greater than vgs minus vt is greater than 0 the mosfet is in pinch off region or saturation region and the device current ids is not a function of vds it is equal to what is called as idss or also known as ids saturation okay and uh, in this mode the mosfet k 
carries a constant current and also acts as a constant current source. Okay. Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt, sir, but uh, we got our test at three, sir. Pardon? Sir, we have a test at three. I mean, like nine. Yeah, yeah. There is one more minute, I know. Yeah, sure. 